Um, so, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Q&A for FAUN. After Rapolia yesterday, the Castle First Academy is uh, moving on to FAUN. And um, some of the members were still in traffic. Uh, it was a bit of a, uh, a situation, but as you may have seen in the corner already, we have members of FAUN right here. So let's please give them a warm welcome to the stage. Welcome. Yeah. So you thought you got out of the sun, right? But we have our own sun here indoors. So uh, it, it's lovely to see you all like butterflies in the, um, <laughs> in the audience. Um, yes, it's kind of hot, but uh, we'll get through it together and uh, we'll get you some drinks, so you should be fine. Um, so I think uh, everybody knows you, but I'm going to give you the opportunity to do a brief introduction. Uh, but I'll first explain how we're going to do this. So this is a Q&A. It's about questions and answers. And it's the answers you get if you ask the questions. So if you have any questions, I will invite you to come over to the mic. And if you have problem asking your, uh, problems asking your question in English, it's fine. I speak a couple of languages. I can understand most of French. German, and of course, Nederlands is geen probleem. So, um, uh, come on over, don't be shy, um, and we'll form an, a neat line. Uh, if you're really, really shy, I will grab the mic myself and head on over to you. But I think it's better to have a line at the mic. Um, so this is all um, for you guys. Everything you always wanted to know about found, but never got the chance to ask, well, this is your chance. So don't be afraid. There are, uh, well, at least three found members here to answer these questions. And um, it's, it feels silly to ask. But Oli, would you please introduce yourself? Um, hello, welcome. Uh, Oliver here from the group Found. Uh, I started this thing together with Fiona more than 15 years ago, this whole craziness, uh, playing some instruments like the Irish bazooki, Swedish key fiddle, a Celtic harp, and singing sometimes. And just for you to know, this is our very, very first panel, our very first question and answer. In all those years, nobody ever had the idea to ask us. So we also don't know what to do or how to behave. It's going to be very interesting. And yeah, don't hold back with the questions because we're very curious here. Thank you. Hi, my name is Laura. Um, I've been in found for, I think it's 17 months already. So, and we have been all over the world together already, Brazil and Europe, Russia, everywhere. And yeah, I'm really looking forward for your questions. Don't be shy. Um, let's enjoy this together. Hello everyone, my name is Fiona and um, maybe you have seen me playing the bagpipes and the flutes in Faun and also singing, Most, mostly I sing the lower voice because I'm too shy to sing the first one. <laughs> but um, we are very happy to now have the most beautiful voice in our band <laughs> which is doing that and um, yes, I'm also very curious about all your questions and yeah, maybe the first person can come up now and ask us something. Yeah, uh, the mic here is live. Um, so I'm wondering who has the guts to ask the first question. I already see people moving. And we have a volunteer for the first question. Indeed. Go ahead, it's yours. Thank you. Uh, yeah, lovely to have you here. Um, I'd be looking for any tips or uh, information about your process in regards to incorporating uh, electronic production into the kind of folk and medieval music that you've done over the years? Yeah, yeah anything about your, your process, how you go about that? To direct the question to you. Yeah, um, I guess Oliver would, has a lot of experience with that maybe? Um, of course, we have to imagine a virtual Neil sitting yeah. here with his <laughs> imagine um, uh, blue, um, yes. <laughs> This is Kilian, our tour manager. <laughs> um, just to mention the girls are drinking alcohol by now. 
So, um, so this might influence the answers. <laughs> so it all started because we, we were folk band um, originally and then we had the uh, chance to meet Niemitra. And the very first time we had the city called Zaubersprüche, that means uh, magic spells. And we wanted a really big drum and we tried to record a really big drum, but it was not possible to get the really deep sound out of it. And so Neil was a good friend of us back then and uh, we asked him, because he did music for theatre plays mostly, and we asked him, can't you do this like uh, digitally, like with a computer? And he had great possibilities to do with equalizers and uh, sound libraries to do really good sounds. And then we started the idea, why do not we integrate electronic sounds in our music? So there was a really big problem at the beginning because we played mostly at folk festivals, medieval markets, tried to be authentic in our clothing, in our instrumentation. And then we had the guy with the laptop. <laughs> <laughs> uh, back then we were hiding him. Uh, we took him to Wave Gothic Treffen uh, the first time live. And we told Neil, hey, you have to come along, but you have to hide your laptop. And he had a basket where he was having his dirty laundry in it. <laughs> and so very spontaneously we cut a hole in this dirty laundry basket and took him to Wave Gothic Treffen, put the laptop into it and it was a big success, people really liked it and we were not uh, hanging on a crucifix afterwards. Um, instead people really say this is a nice invention, this is really fitting to your sound and this is a good way to do. And since then he's a part of our band because to explain many of the old instruments of Renaissance music, medieval music, has not the low register. So there's very little bass instruments. And for our modern ears, we're used to have basses in our music, leading the chords, leading the tones. And because we have no medieval ears to listen to the music, we need to help the medieval music to come a little bit closer to nowadays ears. So uh, this is our attempt to give the music something modern, but still do not leave the archaic feeling we want to create. And Neil hates the sentence, but whenever we work on a song, we tell him, Neil, do something nice and powerful, but keep it acoustic, keep it archaic. Because he can sound like a broken refrigerator, like something very modern, <laughs> but he's not allowed to do so because we're folk men. But it went organic and we're very happy how we got here. And it was not a master plan we were following. It was just things happen. We thought this might be good. And hopefully it was a good idea because we're still here after all these years. I think you're being quite modest when you say things happened, right? I mean, you climbed the German charts with your albums. You, you, I think you were in the top three at one point. So, <laughs> you guys happened. I mean, I think there was, a mar there, there, were, there, was a, there was people waiting for what you produced. There is other bands who really planned it from the beginning. And I know bands, I don't want to mention names, it's also nothing bad, no. but who said, we really want to go, the next CD should be number 10, then we want to go higher. We planned then this CD coming out with this approach, and we never did this. We also did not want to do, we want to make music to enter the charts. But uh, we were, I think, also happy because we did it before the whole boom came. And then came uh, the Lord of the Rings movies, then came Game of Thrones. Yes. The mass interest went to the theme of interest we always had. And um, also the label came to us and we searched something. We searched people who make medieval music but also have the beats and the modern approach, have female vocals. And I think we were really kind of lucky and yeah, ha having a good nose, you say in German, uh, having a good yeah, smell of what might be a good idea. So it's the noses maybe. Right. Okay, so anybody want to ask questions about Noses, albums. Don't focus on the nose, please. No. <laughs> Go ahead. I won't focus on the nose. Uh, you have some kind of switch in the kind of music you made because before from an album it was more like uh, yeah, really folky. And afterwards it's well not poppy, but it's more for normal people to listen. What what what, what did make that switch? Um, I start, and if you want to uh, put something in. Uh, von den Elben was a difficult progress. It's also, we answered in a few interviews, uh, because for the first time we had a big label with big expectations, and they put us to producers. And before, we always produced the music ourselves. And then you had a big, uh, like sometimes 10 people on the couch, three professional producers, the a and of a big label, the other label, the label boss, and everybody talks into your music. And we simply, this was a situation we never had. We said, but this is weird. 
And in the end, we were even not part of the whole mixing process with every song because it was, um, by then, it was more than half a million euro the label put into the CD. And of course, as a label with a band that were not very successful in their eyes before, they wanted to go on the safe side. They said, we need to have something that is selling because we put so much money into it. And, but we felt very uncomfortable with the process also. They were really nice songs, but we said, hey, this is our baby, this is our songs. We really want to um, not feel uh, strange to our own songs. And then it was a uh, lucky combination of being very successful with the CD, because when you're successful in the label managing world, people listen to you. And so then they say, okay, you are very unhappy. What can we do to make you happy, the label said. And then we say, okay, we have to change a lot of things because like this, we're not happy. And fortunately then with Luna, even more with Midgard, the city afterwards, we produced again ourselves. We did the mixes ourselves and we could find the way back to our music, but still working together with the label. But this first step to combine two worlds that are very, very uh, different was uh, yeah was a very difficult balance to find and still we're happy about things happen but looking back i don't like the city von itself von den elben myself too much really? oh, okay. happens <laughs> okay thank you so you said you would start out i what you said you would start answering the question uh, yes, I wanted to pass it on, but she was looking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, we have somebody coming up already, but if you want to add to Ollie's uh, answer, please do so. Yeah, 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 okay. I can add something. <laughs> um, yeah, it was indeed a, a very um, surprising change for all of us also, because kind of we didn't know what we would be expecting with the um, teamwork with the, the label and the producers. So uh, they had their expectations and we had other expectations and it was a time where there were a lot of conflicts also within the band because, yeah, uh, what should we do? How hard should we try to trade with the producers to bring through our own ideas? And um, I'm really, really happy that we made it through this progress, that we step over that, um, over the CD, over the time, and came back to the sound that we really like and that we really have fun on stage to play the songs, that we can now choose our own producers, and um, we just work together with, um, with good friends that record our albums now. So I think now we came back to the point where we say this is the music we really want to make but we st still have the power of the big label on our back to make it also a living from it so I think now we are at a point where where it's settled down yeah <laughs> okay. okay well the line Next is for the line is forming so yeah, uh, yeah. I'll, I'll click and get out of your way and go ahead um, come, um, this is actually kind of following up on the, net, on the previous question because uh, hello YouTube uh, you did a qualifier for the Austri uh, Austrian Eurovision Song Contest if I'm not mistaken uh, how did that happen was that your label's idea was that your idea the song choice stuff like that <laughs> did not quite understand an Austrian... Uh, the Eurovision Song Contest uh, qualifier ah, yeah. you did. The Eurovision Song Contest. Well, actually, uh, of course it was an idea of the label, because you can never be there if you're not in a label. So they just don't take bands from like that have no label. So um, they made this proposal to us, you can go there and, and be part of this. And we were like, yeah, why not? We can try it. I mean, we're very, very unique and very strange, also a strange act for this setting. But we just said, yeah, why not? We, let, let's try it. We were like more, it's an interesting experience for us. And um, it indeed was an interesting experience. We, bu we built ourselves like the whole setup with the big drums and everything. And it was an interesting moment to also get to know all these other artists who are, it's very much like show business and 
we don't feel like show masters so much ourselves many times. So it was interesting to just look into this TV world and it was also very strange. It was both. It was funny and it was strange and I don't want to miss it because I think it's also really nice, you know, to reach audience that would otherwise never know about us. And then we see people come up to the concerts and um, you just can you can just can tell when you see them, okay, they have probably seen us on TV or something and they don't really know about our music and then they come into the show and they just know one or two of the hits, you know? And then the whole concert gets for them, gets kind of trippy and they, they are like, wow, what are they doing now? And um, I enjoy this very much and I also look very much into the eyes of the audience when I play and I think it's a good thing, you know, to just attract people and then do something different. <laughs> and, and they like it very, very many times. I think it's uh, awesome how your open attitude towards that uh, festival opened up the world of these festivals because mm -hmm. you, you bridged the gap, right? I mean, yes. it, it can be quite different, but you had an open mind and, and inquisitive and, well, just picked it up, uh, made it happen, and now you're inviting them over here. So I think you're helping this scene grow. I hope so. I think it's very important not to stick on the view um, like just we are in a little scene or something. There's so many interested people and no matter how they look like or what they do in their normal life, they're, they're all very beautiful human beings and I, I welcome every, you know, every, every type of person on our concert and I think it's always a very nice compliment that we have a very mixed audience, that we have... Um, people you would maybe find on a classical event and then next to them there sit really hardcore gothic guy with piercings all over the body and they just look at each other and go like, whoa, okay, we're in the same concert, that's weird, but it's okay. And then they have to arrange or sometimes you have a granny sitting there, a granny, like she would be really old and know still the old lyrics of the old German folk songs, so I love this mixture. Yeah, <laughs> definitely bridging gap, uh, gaps, right? So, yeah. Awesome. Well, okay, next question, please. <laughs> Is it too high for you? Yeah. <laughs> Here we go. Um, actually, this is a question for Arnie. Um, it's about the, the myths and the legends that you sang about. How, how do you find that? Where, where do you find all the original myths and legends that you base your, your songs upon? Um, when we started, it was pretty easy. Also back then, I was still studying um, medieval literature. Mm. So, and I always try to focus on the stuff that is pre-Christian because um, the Celts, for example, they didn't write down the holy knowledge. It was only uh, via archaeological finds or via uh, the Christian monks who wrote down what the Celts were doing. So it's very difficult to go to the sources that are not Christian, actually. But these are the myths that we want to work with, like connected to nature, connected to the old times. And um, so there were a few nice sources. Um, but then we're really proud about so many bands because we then called it Pagan or something. And now so many bands do Pagan folk, there's festivals like this one here. It makes it a little difficult to be true because you can only have so many songs about Kernonos and so many songs about... Uh, so there is a limited amount. But still, I believe it's archetypes also. So it's no matter how you call it, if you call it the Christian name or the, the Celtic name. So I think it's archetypes. And when you have the feeling you have the right image, the right myth, connected with the right emotions, because we cannot say this is past and over. We have to find it in our own lives, in our own emotions. And when you have the combination, I think then you feel the strongest reaction of the, public, uh, of the audience and also yourself. It's something that starts to vibrate. And this is what we try to do. And sometimes it already happens when you have a lyrics. You think, oh, this is really strong. It has some knowledge, some meaning in it that is timeless. And then we try to make it into music. Or sometimes we write our own lyrics and just have the have the idea of some old myth. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> so when you go back to these ancient times, right? There's <laughs> the Latin language, there's Greek, uh, and you even sang uh, or sing uh, Scandinavian lyrics. 
How do you prepare for such different languages than your native tongue, German? Um, for me, I've always been interested in different languages and foreign languages. And um, as a singer, I can just tell that I give a proper listen to um, those native speakers on maybe YouTube. It's, we're lucky to have internet yeah. <laughs> nowadays. Um, so I give a listen to whatever they say, maybe it's some random things. And so I kind of get a feeling for the language. And I think that's really important that you get a feeling for it because every language has a different flow. And also if you like um, foreign languages, if you really like foreign languages, I think you have kind of an aim to, don't know, speak them or learn them or even sing them. And if you're a singer, you really want to sing them. Yeah. So well, yeah. I, yeah, I, I can really relate to what you're saying because of course the music is emotion as well. And if you yeah. get the flow of the language, it's much better expressed. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. All right. I think I have somebody waiting behind me, so. Maybe. <laughs> Thank you. I'm, I'm sure you get asked many, many times what pagan folk means, um, but I have a slightly different but related question. Um, how would you define the essential sound that makes up pagan folk? I think it's, um, it's hard to talk about the concrete sound but I think the word pagan and pagan folk is more about the content of the lyrics and the feel that lays, lays within the music, like, um, like a, trans, a trans kind of relation to uh, nature, to weather, to wind, to tree, to whatever you sing about and to really to really be able to adopt into the thing you are think singing about and worship worshiping nature in all its forms. And um, since we, we, I think we created that pagan folk word, even I can't really remember, we had the problem that there was no, um, um, no frame in which uh, we could be put when the people ask us, what kind of music do you play? We were always like, yeah, it's hard to explain. It's some kind of folk. But then we also have electronic music. And we were like, mm, how do we call it? And then we just said it's pagan folk. So it's definitely a lot of folk in it. But nowadays, uh, some, some bands, they say we are playing pagan folk. And then they sound different. And that's totally OK. I mean, I think it's more about the meaning than it's, it's about some um, anim animistic point of view from, from the world, you know? Yeah. <laughs> it is uh, true, I believe, that you were the ones to coin the phrase pagan folk. And I, I know so. it, it, it's dated uh, in an introductory, uh, introductory you did in 2004. It's like a long we, time. Yes, but <laughs> you, you said we, it's, it's, it's recorded actually. Yeah. <laughs> and you say, we don't know how to call this. It's a bit of pagan. It's like, folk. well, it's pagan folk. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. So yeah, own it. This is yes. this is your invention. Now. And to add a little bit to to your question, we also try, of course, to integrate in the sound fields of nature. For example, I really love to if the song, for example, in the song Wassermann, there is the line where the princess she goes down in the lake because she's married to the the waterman, and then she goes down, and I, with the flute I try to. To, um, to play the bubbles that come up to the, um, through the water of her breath, you know? And I try to, like a musician of the theater, I like to, in, um, like to um, interpret the, the, the movements of the nature or what's ever in the song, yeah. Okay, um, we're okay. switching things up. I yep. think we're gonna have a dual question or are you gonna choose who gets first? Well. Okay, to, this is a question together. Let's, let's see how this works. Um, coming back on uh, languages you sing in, um, did you have Latin or ancient Greek at school and did you like it or how did you otherwise learn it? 
I personally had Latin at school and I hated it. Same. <laughs> and I also had Latin at school seven years and I loved it. <laughs> I really loved it. The first, I even wrote a song in Latin for a faun, which is called Unda. And um, it was so funny because we were sitting in our room with Lisa, at, it's a very long time ago, and we just wrote the first song in Latin language and we were feeling like little kids playing a trick on our Latin teacher just to write a song in Latin. And um, which, of course, we tried to do everything correct in grammatic point of view, but I, I still don't know if there's maybe a little mistake in it, but I just don't care, actually. <laughs> yeah. And you? I didn't have Latin, I chose French, and I really liked it, but my grades sucked. <laughs> Hence the fact that there are not many French songs I why. available. <laughs> well, I don't feel guilty because I've only been in the band for 17 months. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You, sir, yes. you have a question. Yes, I do. Um, Oliver, uh, earlier today you said that uh, most of the music is more um, with electronics because people like that nowadays. But still, your album, uh, Buch der Balladen, is a very favorite of mine. Um, will you be do something like this again in the near future? Like an acoustic album? Uh, for sure we do. Because uh, the point is, we, every year we have acoustic concerts. Because this is where we came from. Like, uh, before we went on the big stages, we had an acoustic band. So it was the four of us, uh, Fiona, me, Elisa back then, singing and playing a little hurdy-gurdy and Rüdiger with the percussion. We were just standing around on the market. There, we were even too small to fit on the stage because... So we stand at the bathtub, medieval bathtub, on the tavern, singing a few songs. And this was good because like this we found our uh, click together, how to play tight and be together. And there's a few songs that we still have in our repertoire mm -hmm. that are more storytelling. And I think this is also the problem because sometimes we like to tell a full story and this is better in German for us because of course we are native speakers and it's really easy for us to dig deep into the old ballads and literature of German and if you have a really long song I think you don't need electronic beats, you don't want to dance to it it's more you want to tell the story and then it's maybe simpler to have a harp accompaniment a little bit maybe a flute coming in and so there is a certain repertoire of us that we keep alive because we are very, um, it, we are very fond of it. And for sure it's going to be another city in this direction. Uh, but we have a little bit of problem playing it internationally because uh -huh. it's very German based. And then other people tell us, no, no, we love the German, it sounds good. Um, but for us sometimes it's really, we search really well for the stories. And we really want to tell the story also because yeah. there's so much hidden knowledge in old stories. For example, we have one story about the Herr Heinrich, that's yeah. a man, and the man is uh, on the hunt and then the door breaks open and then the troll is coming in his house. And, but the story, if you look really close, it's picked with symbols. Like he has to make a bed that is full of heather, the, the uh, herb heather and something. And there's tons of little symbols everywhere and I think it's impossible to translate. And so therefore it's very German. We play a lot of acoustic concerts in Germany every year. And, but for sure there's another CD also coming up. Yeah, hopefully, because I don't mind if, it's, if it is in German. And okay. not always I understand it, but the yeah. song is very beautiful. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Maybe sometimes we try to sing English, but it sounds a little like, uh, like English people say, oh, they're really German. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the same goes with the uh, Scandinavian languages. I, I think you don't speak them all, but you still get the feel of the song, right? So the emotion, like you said, if the flow is okay in your language, then you know, the rest comes through, so uh, for sure. Eagerly waiting, right, for your turn. So go ahead. Thank you. Hi, my name is Helen. I have a question for all three of you. Uh, first, Laura. I'm very curious to know how your introduction in Faun has been. Did you know Faun before you started? I also really want to know from Fiona how you and Ali got together. And from Ali, I really would love to know how long does it take 
for a CD to first from the ID into making the CD and coming out. How long does it take the whole process? So, okay. so, so you're actually taking advantage of the opportunity to ask questions. <laughs> <I am. clears throat> I'll keep it short. <laughs> So if if you hey, forget, if you get this is my first time yeah, yeah, too, yeah. you know. <laughs> yeah, if if you forget the, quest, the question halfway through, don't be afraid. I think you've got to memorize, right? Yes, I got. So it. if you think, yeah. what was the second question, then you're right here, right? Yes, I okay. Am. Okay, then let's start. Um, well, um, I don't really know like how we got introduced. I've I've known some members from Elveti which is a Swiss metal band. And then one day I got, a I got messaged by Oli if I wanted to jam with him and just make music and try it out. And um, I wanted to. <laughs> and we did play music and it, was, it just felt really right. And then he um, invited me to play with the whole band. And then we had a setting where I got to know the other members and we played music together. And that was kind of... I would describe it as magic ah. in the room. So, yeah, it, it just felt really good. I was curious how that would feel for you. Yeah. yeah, that was just like, I was really, like, really nervous, but also really, it just felt good. And actually, I've known, um, found, if that was your second question, um, as a band um, for actually only one CD, and that was Licht. I had it at home, and I loved it. So, um, but I didn't... I, I don't know, I just didn't listen to them for many years just because I was making rock music. <laughs> Maybe that's the point, I don't know. Um, it's not that I disliked them, I just forgot about them. <laughs> I'm honest, sorry. <laughs> so yeah, Brutally but I loved honest, it. <laughs> but, uh, I, I respect that. <laughs> okay, next. <laughs> so, so you had a question for everyone, right? Yes. From Fiona, I would really like to know how you and Ali got together at the first. Yeah, it's a funny story. Actually, I was, um, <laughs> I have to tell it, I'm sorry. We were out, <laughs> my, f my friend and me, like, I think I was 18. I just returned. No, I must, I must have been like 20 probably. I just came back from Australia. Yes, I came back from Australia and me and my friend, we went out to hunt boys basically oh. <laughs> and um, we had with us vodka lemon <laughs> and then we picked Ollie and and <laughs> <laughs> it's a very funny story but it's true I have to tell the truth too how so many glasses did it take um, now we we found <laughs> out that that he he's not able to drink very much vodka oh. but we found out that he's a musician and then well, I, I didn't like him as like, you know, I, I think I just, he's just a nice guy, really nice guy. We can get along well, but we can try make music. So we made music and that happened really so good. We met for a session and we made music for two hours or something and just finished without words. And we said, yeah, that's cool. We get, we're going to make music together. And that's actually how I met Oli and um, yeah. So, so um, um, yesterday when we had uh, Rapalje at the panel yeah. here, uh, uh, Deep and uh, uh, David were um, exchanging the microphone uh -huh. and um, uh, Deep would say, well, that's David's side of the story. <laughs> <laughs> well, I never asked you for your side of the story, actually. <clears throat> First of all, I was a little afraid that you tell me now that it's the same how Rapalje started out, you know? They went into disco and... <laughs> no, it was actually like this. So we met in a very drunken state of mind in a bar in Munich. And uh, what's most important, then we did music, like I think very soon after. And no matter how long you played, you know, maybe some of you are musicians and know this feeling. No matter how long you play, how many songs you put after each other, improvising, playing around, uh, maybe after half an hour, maybe after 10 minutes, there is the last tone and you end exactly at the tone because you feel it. And this you don't have very often. And this really happened like magically. And so this was the sign, hey, of course, this is so good together. And I I think back then it was flute and guitar we played mostly, but it was perfect. So we started to make street music immediately and yeah, never stopped since then. 
Oh yeah, no, my last question, yeah, yeah, yeah. yes. Uh, how long does it take the whole process from the start, from the start of the idea to, uh, to the CD when it's done? Um, there is no one answer to this because our craziest CD project was the CD called Eden. Yeah. And it took us, I think, four and a half years actually to make the CD. Wow. Because uh, we had a change of lineup in between. We went into the studio. We went out of the studio again. We made the booklet of a 70-page book actually for it. So sometimes you have an idea of a theme yeah. and you want to follow it. And sometimes you have the feeling the circle is not closed. Huh. And so back then we had the opportunity to just stay on doing, doing uh, go on. Now, of course, we have a label. The label says, well, in music business, it's common to have one and a half year cycles. Yeah. One uh, and a half? One and a half. It's the common thing for a professional band to do. So we try to be professional. We are not. <laughs> So, um, just frankly, just we are, we're very personal and private here. So, um, talking frankly, the last time the label says, hey, um, you should make a new CD, we said, hey, guys, we are, we are not ready. We, just, we don't want to just get out songs. We want to do yeah. something that yeah. we really feel. Yeah. We said, can we do a best-of CD? Because yeah. we exist for so many years, we never had one. Yeah. And they said, yeah, that's a great idea. Yeah. So, we had now we made this cycle a little longer. Yeah. We're now intensely working they on... allow you to? Make it longer? Uh, because the idea was so good. They said, yeah. yeah, true. You are more than 15 years in the business Perfect. and never had a best off, never looking back. Yeah. And so now we're working intensely on songs. But normally it means you have an idea of a theme because we like to have a theme. Then you collect ideas, you collect songs. Yeah. This might take half a year. Then you go into studio. This might take half a year. And then the la normally one and a half years is a good amount of time that you really need. Mm -hmm. But that also means, and that's a really weird thing, when you release a CD or you make the tour for a CD, the tour is normally half a year later, that your head is already totally busy with the next CD. Is so, it? Yeah. But everybody talks, oh, Midgard is such a nice Nordic CD, and in your head you already have the next songs, and you're just... This is a little weird. That's it makes odd. it a little sh schizophrenic, but it's also good <laughs> because life of a musician is schizophrenic. Anyhow. Oh, is it? Oh, good. It is very much. Well, thank you for your answers, and Fiona, thank, thank you for your honesty. <laughs> we love it. <laughs> So I think somebody just realized, wait, what, you can ask multiple questions? <laughs> you keep it going? Yeah, yeah, for sure. By all means, go. Okay. Um, we, we came onto the, the Best Of CD, uh, and um, that's obviously reworking a lot of material from the past. And of course, with the, the lineup changes over the years, you've had to rework old material. And I'm just wondering if there's any, uh, any difficulties, any, what are the... the good and bad things, pitfalls you've encountered with re reworking your old material years later? Uh, I just pass it on because everybody yeah. can say a little bit to it. I think for me it was genius because there's so many old songs that I like to do better. So it was a great chance. For example, Rosemarine is a very old song for us, but there's never a good recording. So I was so happy to say, yeah, let's have the chance, go in the studio again, play it a little more nice. And just choosing the right songs, just choosing a, was really difficult. But w I, I'm very happy with the outcome. Um, I'm ha really happy with the outcome as well. Of course, it, the hardest thing was to choose the songs, but what I really liked um, also was making a new version of Wind und, Wind und Geige, which is like such an amazing song. I love it. And I especially love like how our two voices sound together. Sometimes they even sound like one voice, and we kind of managed with the great work of the band and um, Alex, who was in the studio, to really bring the whole live feeling and everything and the voices theme um, into onto the album. And that was like really, really, I think, um, hard, but it worked out so fun. And actually, I really love listening to the song, so I'm really happy with the, with the outcome of the, the whole album. Yes, uh, the choosing of the songs is a, is a very interesting point because, of course, every one of us has, um, has his own best of list and they are all different. And then you also have to think of what is most popular in the audience, which songs are most popular like all over the world. So we tried to make a combination of all of these different interests. And um, my personal best of would have looked different, of course. But I really enjoyed the process, especially of recording some of the old songs in the, act, in the actual version we are playing them now live. Because, you know, 
when you play songs like a thousand times <laughs> on concert, which is actually true. Some of the songs we have played a thousand times. So, of course, they grow and they evolve to something different and they get more intense and you add a little something there and here and of course you add a new instrument like the hurdy-gurdy for example or Laura's voice who is now in Faun and we also want to um, want to have a recording of course with her voice and so I think I'm really happy that we did this that we had the chance to re-record some of the old songs and I'm also I'm also happy with the outcome, especially of the live vers versions. Yeah. Thank you. Good. So we've been um, speaking of albums and, and uh, bringing together songs to form a best of. Mm -hmm. um, there's a question. Um, I will give you the opportunity. Um, hi. Uh, I was wondering which songs is, which songs is your personal favorite and why? Kind of a question for each of you. Uh -huh. but, hey. <laughs> for me, it's always the song I'm working on at this very moment. Because when I make a new song, I, f I, I fall in love with the song. And I have to because otherwise it's not a good song. Um, but when I'm not actually working on a song at this moment, and I have to think of all the songs we have made, <laughs> it's a hard choice. <laughs> um, I, I really very much love the Sigurd Lied, which is on Buch der Balladen. And I, um, I really love uh, Him to Pan. Yeah, those are my favorites. There's many though. <laughs> um, if I had to choose from all the found songs, I can't say, I can't pick one. Like, that's really too hard. But I'm going to pick tr three. <laughs> and, um, number one is definitely um, Odin. I love it. I love when we play it live. It's such a force. It's so strong. And for me, that's because we talked about it. That's like, like pagan folk at its best. And um, I also love Egi Saga. Um, and... I also really, really love Him to Pan because it's such a fawny song. It has so much feelings and everything on stage and you can tell that the audience really feels it too. So it gives you much as a musician. But most of the audience, there's also sometimes you play for cultural people sitting in their armchairs and think, what the fuck are they doing, you know? Screaming some pagan things around. Um, this, it's also for me it's difficult because I think there's different categories. There's the category you have a CD, you make a CD and think, yeah, this mix is fantastic. And you want to play the song later on on stage and think, wow, it's actually not so strong because you just did a really good work in the studio, combining, piling up different instruments. For example, in that case, I really love uh, Macbeth. I think because we did a beautiful studio version, also because Maya, she plays a beautiful cello. And... It's difficult to recreate it, but then I listen to it and I think, this is a perfect mix, I love it so much. Then there's other songs that are really great on stage. Odin, for example, it's like you have a little wind machine in, inside of you. You think, oh, this is really great to perform and makes a lot of fun. And there's other songs where it's just a simpleness, you know. I like to sit at home and play it acoustically and think, oh, this is such a nice song. And so, yeah, fortunately, it's not the one song. It's like... Every song has aspects, and when you go on stage, you have those little moments. You think, ah, oh, now this nice moment is coming up. And yeah, like looking forward for tomorrow, actually. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, Him to Pan was mentioned. Um, you said we're looking forward to tomorrow. Um, tomorrow, um, later in the evening, of course, there's also a special pagan uh, event. Um, if, if we're lucky, and uh, it's all allowed, the burning of the Wicker Man. Uh, you don't play here every year, but you were playing one year um, during the Wicca ritual. Um, could, could you tell about the experience of what happens around the Wicca and the fact that you are uh, the one on stage uh, at that time? Um, so we played right afterwards. Yeah. So um, it's, it's two aspects. I think it's, for, first of all, it's 
difficult because you have like, I don't know, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000 people standing together and everybody has different things in their head. So one says, yeah, I really need to have a toilet now. The other thing, I really want French fries. The other guy really feels it and puts some really deep emotion into the wicker beast. And it's, it's very difficult sometimes to combine so different people. But the power of a ritual or the power of a group is that if you really try to focus on something together, it's not just one and one together, it's multiplying. And in this case, I think you can really feel it because um, you have so many people and have this thing happening together, burning together, so many wishes, so many things to change. And that is a beautiful ritual and I think it's really good to do rituals because so many things in our life we want to change or have changes or think I want to change myself and you don't find the time for it and sometimes it helps us a lot to make it visible to make it I make some gesture or something that reminds me of it and maybe this is a moment where I think I want to stop smoking and then they have the image of this burning wicker beast in their mind and this helps them to remember you know to have this strong image and it's really, it's a big honor to be part of such a process here. People build it for many weeks, it's the festival, and then to give the music afterwards, this is a big honor, and even if there's fire not allowed tomorrow, they burn it afterwards. Please put your things and put your wishes, be there with your emotions. It's not about the moment, it's about being together and doing something together. Yeah. Hello again. Hello. <laughs> you want to go for seconds? Yes. Okay. It's actually kind of awkward to ask this question, but I'm playing in a small band myself as well. I'd really like to cover some songs of you. Do you mind? You don't? Okay, well, that's really cool. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to shamelessly promote what she's doing. Um, you're in a band called The Flask, yes. right? So if you see The Flask perform, yeah, it's like the, the, yeah, exactly, The Flask. So if you see The Flask covering your songs, Here's where it started. <laughs> um, talk about different projects. Um, you all have like your side projects going on, right? I mean, s maybe not all, but the several band members. Um, uh, how do you how do you combine that with everything happening already around Faun? And and talk about yeah, I think it's a balloon somewhere. <laughs> I hope it's not a child. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but. Um, uh, I mean, there's a lot of st uh, things going on, right? So you got your busy schedules, and then you have your side projects, which might have a total different f uh, feel. And um, since we're shamelessly plugging, don't uh, be afraid to plug, of course, what you're doing here at Castlefest besides yeah. found, because there's more happening with you people. Um, I'm not doing anything besides Found on Castle Fest, but I do have side projects I'm currently working on. And actually, um, it takes a lot of time, but on the one hand, it's my job to be a musician, and I really love my job. So I don't count the time, I just do it, kind of. And for, of course, Found is priority number one, so I do everything for Found. And if I find time after that, I would do things for my other projects. And the other musicians I work with, they're all professional musicians as well, so they kind of have the, the same approach and um, kind of the same way of working. So it's just like a priority thing. And of course, the other projects take way more time than Found does. We have a very strong rule also saying this because Faun always comes first. It's like the big brother and he eats the most and when there's something left over, they get a little rest. Yeah. Because otherwise it wouldn't work, of course. So if there's gaps in the agenda, the other people can fill them. Yeah. And I think everybody of us is just simple things like I have Folk Noir, for example, a band playing more modern music and it's simply because I sit a lot at home on the couch and play guitar because the bazooki is always falling off a lap, you know, it's round, it's always... And it's the most comfortable thing, sitting in the evening on the couch and plucking a guitar. And there's just simply songs uh, came out by doing this. And I think, oh, this is songs and I want to play them if they're there. And so, of course, you have a little time left over and then you do it. And today uh, I have at uh, quarter past six I play a concert on the village uh, stage that I play Nordic music. 
because I, um, I'm a big fan of uh, Gamana and Hedingana, two Swedish bands, yeah. and I always wanted to understand what they're doing. I said, how do they do it, and what's the rhythm? And, and then I had the uh, big fortune to have Boris living close by, who's a very good player of Swedish music. And so I was visiting him. Mostly he was my teacher to teach me Swedish music. And so we played once a week, every two weeks. And after a while we had a repertoire on Swedish music. And it took us, I think, six or seven years until somebody else asked us, couldn't you play a few songs because it sounds good? <laughs> and so we never did it to make a CD or to come on stage, but just for us to make the music. But now we have a repertoire and if there's a nice occasion, we play it. And we're very happy if the people are there and listen to it. And so this is happening today at a quarter past six. It's called Kaunan, a uh, Nordic folk. And then there's something very special happening, right? Ah, yeah. And after after Kaunan, when you when you have been when every one of you <laughs> has gone to the Kaunan concert, <laughs> um, you can you can come to the Meadow stage actually because tonight there's going to be um, a very premiere moment for me <laughs> because we are going to play on the meadow stage with my piano side pro project. I play piano since I was a little kid. I can't even remember when I started to play piano. It's, this is like my homeland of music ever. I feel at home, I practice five hours a day when I was a kid, it's just totally my universe and I never shared it with audience. Just until like two years ago, I had this moment sitting in front of the bonfire in the winter and I was, all of a sudden, I have to do this. I mean, I have to do it now. I have to start right now. And then I started to write songs like a maniac, and I recorded the CD within a half year. And um, I, I hear it actually, takes a professional you know, there band is one a, and a there half is year. <laughs> <laughs> it took me a half year to to prepare for the recordings. And um, wow. this was a time, of, of course, there's this rule, found comes first. And I didn't, I didn't really miss out on any found shows or anything, but to be honest, my only, my only aim was to work on the piano music and I was totally spaced out with it. <laughs> and um, yeah, tonight is gonna be a very beautiful thing happening because we, I have a lot of beautiful ladies invited, <laughs> like uh, Laura. <laughs> She's also going to guest on two songs as a singer and Maya Friedman with cello and there's also going to be a beautiful dancer because piano music and dancing for me is also very connected in a way in my fantasy world and, and also we have uh, Nina from the band Waldkauts who is like the little, she's like, she's like me 20 20 years ago or something. I feel like totally like a sister to her. So I asked her, do you want to play my, my music on your flute? Because I can't play piano and flute at the same time. It's, it's just a pity, but it's just true. And it's also very good luck because um, I'm really happy to, to invite her and you know just make this happen. And we're gonna also have the, a very, very cool drummer to support all of this and keep us all together and not make us just freak out all the girls on stage. And yeah, I'm a bit excited. But if you want to come, it's at 8 o'clock at the Meadow stage. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, I am definitely going to be there. Cool. Um, <laughs> and we're going to be uh, s sending out, of course, your music into, uh, well, uh, the, uh, the uh, cyberspace. Because um, That's we'll, nice. we will be recording and streaming yeah. there. Because many people uh, wrote me, oh, are you going to be on the live stream? Yes, for sure. Um, I didn't expect that even, but it's cool. It's yeah. Um, I, I think what I love about your answer is that um, you can you can see uh, re really see shine through that it's a personal uh, journey for you. Yeah, uh, that's true. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> so to be able to have that premiere here on Castle Fest is uh, is quite something I can imagine. It's a very personal thing because I I just put every like like my inner feelings in this music, so. so but it's, it's also very beautiful to share it. So I have these personal questions, but my spidey sense says there's somebody yeah, there's who also has one, yeah. Come on, it's yours. Hello, uh, I want to ask two questions. First one, I s listened to your song, Oynenkiaf. Or, yeah, how did you find that? Because it's old Turkish language, I am Turk. 
because I know how do you find that? Yeah, maybe I also answer your question at first, at least. Um, I uh, I was very interested. I I brought on this song Oining Yar, and you know, in the band songwriting process, it's always different. Someone brings on a song, maybe Oli or maybe Laura or maybe me or Stefan, whoever. But Oining Yar, I learned this song from a Sufi master in Turkey, Turkey. and because I was studying Turkish music. I was very interested in Turkish music and especially in the healing aspects that are still uh, tran transported and that are still, they kept the knowledge about the healing power of harmonies in the Turkish tradition and that's, I thought this is very interesting and that's why I went to Istanbul and to, to learn the Turkish music and that's where I picked up the song Oining Yar and I really like it, it's a very joyful song and um, yeah, the other guys, they liked it, and then we started making a found song of it. Okay. And my second question uh -huh. is, do you have any plan to come to Turkey for concerts? Um, yes, we really want to come. We have a few invitations, but it never worked out so far. So it's sometimes you can really feel the people asking you many emails, and you want to come, people want you to come, but it's, of course, there's a little... Uh, uh, bridge in between and this is the organizer and so far we never had the organizer who says yes I make it happen but we really hope so there's a few countries in the world but we really miss out it's like uh, Turkey or number one I think uh, UK we never went to England for example and I think yeah there's three or four countries where we really want to make it happen but without the right help we cannot unfortunately but we hope we really hope thank you I think it's incredible that you've never been to the UK. So uh, let's send this message out there. Anybody who has any kind of influence, please. Yeah, you should cross that canal. That was nice. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was about to say we're almost running out of time. So if you want to ask your question, don't go home wishing you had had the guts to form a, a, well, part of the line here. Um, but uh, for now, I'll leave the question to you. Uh, hi, I have a question about your uh, Best Of tour currently in Germany. I will be attending your uh, show in uh, Berlin uh, in, the, uh, in November. Can you maybe tell us a little bit about how the tour is progressing, how it is with all the former band members to play, and, and maybe one re request for an old song, if possible, if you can play uh, uh, Die Königin. Königin. It's a very uh, beautiful song for me. <laughs> Okay, we, we still dis didn't decide about the set list yet, so we're going to take this in consideration. <laughs> yes. No, really, really. Um, this is one of the plans. We want to have the best moments of our festival set, but we also want to play a lot of old songs that we have not played for a while. Yeah. And so this is going to be really nice for us to look back into the mirror and see ourselves 20 years ago, 15 years ago. And we had we just... Um, Two months ago, we went to a concert together. We visited the concert of an amazing band. It was called uh, The Popes of Paganism. And they covered a few old songs I found. And we really said, oh, yeah, it works out fantastic. It's, so we're not afraid to play them. So it's going to be great. And um, yeah, we have, for example, we had beautiful ideas on a stage settings. For example, I think I can spoil this one. doesn't matter. No? OK, sorry. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> um, so uh, I spoiled it. <laughs> Keep them listening away. So, um, for example, we had once we had a, a curtain, you know, and we started only with a shadow play, and you could not see the musicians, and we had uh, video beamers projecting like images on on ourselves, on the musicians, and on the whole stage. And these are little things you need, like hours. Uh, Kila needs hours. We sit and have uh, tea meanwhile. But Kila needs hours to make this all happening, have the video beamers at the right angle. And these are things you cannot do at festivals, unfortunately. And so we did this once for the Eden tour, but then every tour you need new ideas, new concepts. And now we thought, hey, we have a best of tour. We can do all the nice moments we just put together. And we still have, of course, all the material lying around somewhere. And so this is very nice for us to have these nice moments, nice stage setups, old songs, 
and also, of course, great guests joining us for the first time on stage. So yeah, it's only seven concerts, so that's a pity, because if you have a nice thing, you want to show it to the people. But I'm very happy for the people who come. Thank yeah, you. I'm looking forward to it, yeah. And also, uh, men, m meeting the former band members again. How, how is that? Like Lisa? Uh, that was fantastic. We just met in a bar by coincidence. And I didn't know she was in Munich even, and we had a good talk, and it was so easy, actually. And um, we had so many years playing together, and it's so nice to not you know, say, hey, this is my past, this is, no, of course, the past belongs to you, it's a part of you, and, like, she's a part of Faun, and, yeah. of course, we do not want to close the door, we want to look back, say, hey, this was a nice time, have a few nice songs with her together, but also have a great party on stage with a lot of great musicians. Okay, thanks. Okay, so this is actually going to be the last question. I, I, we already ran over time. Um, so, um, here you go. I have a question about the song uh, Foya you did. You also decided to, de uh, to do this song in English. Can you describe the process why you uh, decided to do that? Uh, I do a fast answer and if you want to add something. Um, uh, videos are a good medium for us to reach a lot of people and we are fortunate to do them. It's a lot of work. But I think it's a beautiful uh, opportunity to show people our world, the world we dream in, images. And so when we decided we do a video for the new song, uh, we know that many, maybe millions of people worldwide will see it. But then when we wrote the song, we had a very strong message in the song because we said, this is fire. Of course, everybody knows, yeah, it's nice on the campsite, I can warm myself, but there's a catharsis also in fire, there's a cleaning moment, you know, burning something and making something new, having a good soil for the ground afterwards, maybe like the wicker beast. And so we had the strong message and we thought it's a pity, so millions of people will see this video and will not understand the meaning of the song. And so then we had this stupid idea looking back to say, well, we translate the song into English. But of course, like having a song in a really a lot of lyrics, having a song and a melody, and then afterwards taking the same song, the same meaning, and put it into another language is hell. To have, you know, <laughs> squeeze it into another language. So it took like weeks actually to find an English lyrics that is good to sing, that is having the same meaning, and it was nearly the same amount of work like writing the song finding the translation. So we will never do it again, I think, because it was hell. But I'm happy we did it because there's a strong message in the song and this is why we do music, for people to understand our message also. Thank you. <laughs> so uh, I'll join you up on stage again then. So you will find out how hot it is here. Uh, yeah, you were talking <laughs> about hell, right? I mean, this is... <clears throat> I was like sitting in the sun. So, um, I already said we ran uh, over time. Um, uh, did we say when exactly Faun itself will be playing? I think we mentioned Kaunan, I, we mentioned you, Fiona. No, it's tomorrow evening at half past ten on the forest stage. But, of course, I hope you're all going to be there for the Vicar Man and just stay around and just, yeah, listen to a little bit of music. Yeah. So, um, I would like to thank you for enduring uh, the sun in here. Um, I, I really want to thank you for the openness of your answers. I mean, I think this is what the panel is all about, right? Just not a, a slick interview, but really you answering um, these wonderful questions. And, and I'd like to thank the audience for the courage to step up to the microphone and answer that question because I, I know it can be nerve-wracking for some people to be in the spotlight like that. But um, yeah, awesome that you had the courage to do so. so. Yeah, it, as I said, it was our first panel and we, I, I loved it. I felt really nice and comfortable and thanks for the really nice questions and for the nice wind you did. I can feel it a little when you go really fast there. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. It was a pleasure, really. All right, so um, uh, let's, let's hear your thanks for Fawn uh, for this hour. Yeah. Enjoy the rest of the festival. Uh, we'll be seeing you around. <laughs>